Well, my father uh, was an architect and he uh, got an assignment from an American uh, engineering company to come to Tehran uh-huh. and to do some building and give some lectures. And then uh, actually, he also played in a jazz band and he oh got invited. God. Yeah, 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 yeah. He I got invited. <laughs> He got invited uh, the Dutch Queen's birthday, uh, on the you know it, it's big in Holland. So he got invited at the Dutch Embassy in Tehran, and wow. uh, my grandfather used to be a, a team star, a general. Uh, so he also got invitations to come uh, for important parties like that, and he took my mother with him, and then wow. they met. And actually, my father had to do, you know, to pursue my mother for at least a year before he was allowed to be with her and see her. So it's wow. a wonder, even, you know, that I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> and he tried hard. <laughs> he really tried hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He really tried hard. And uh, you know, but my father also learned the language, and he speaks good Farsi, actually, with a uh, little bit of an accent, of course. He knows yes. a lot about the culture. He's actually. Um, uh, retired professor of the Technical University here in Delft, and uh, he used to lecture a lot and give a lot of, you know, especially about Iran and uh, about the history of Iran. So that's very funny, he being a Dutch guy, knowing so much about the heritage of the Iranians and their, uh, you know, the Persians. As I recall, um, had you changed schools in the revolution? Uh, yeah, I was uh, joining first, I went to the Dutch school in Tehran. There was uh, one class and I was in that with Hari. Hari was a, a boy my age and the two of us had that class that was specially uh, set up for us, for us two Dutchies. Yeah. Amazing. And, uh, yeah, the teachers were actually married to each other. So that was also very funny. Mm-hmm. And my grandfather used to teach us French at our home. So, you know, and then they thought, well, maybe I need more education. So then my parents decided to see if Iran Zamin would be a possible, uh, you know, school for us. About two years of school, but I'm actually born in Tehran. So I've been living from 40, uh, for, uh, 64 till um, 78. 70, yeah, set yeah. In, in Iran. And then I went back to Holland for about three years and then we came back. So. Uh, oh, I was about, what yeah. years did you go to Holland? Um, I left, I think I was about six. So 1970, 71, we went to Holland. I had two years, three years education here at the Dutch school. Mm-hmm. And then I had to learn some new uh, verbs because I was too Farsi at that time. <laughs> yes. Born and raised by... Uh, you know, Persian mother means that, and, and family, of course. So I've been uh, excessively loved and I was very loose. So I had to learn. Uh, I had to, <laughs> to learn be... the Dutch ways. Yeah, yeah. Aww. You know, riding a bike, going uh, to school alone, uh, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were, you know, in, in, in Tehran, we had someone who brought us to school and you know I was not allowed on the streets alone and stuff like that so it was a, a revolutionary time actually for me to to suddenly be able to bike and go alone and ex- actually everybody expected us to be like that that is such an interesting uh, contrast of cultures yes it is and I, I can imagine now how difficult it had, must have been for my mother especially to adjust because she was always afraid that something would happen to me and my sister. Yeah. No, so she forced my dad to go after us with the car because we wanted to be Dutchies and independent. So that is so yeah. funny. <laughs> so I remember that my dad was always somewhere behind us and my mother <laughs> made it, you know. My mother pretending made it not do that. to be. <laughs> no, but you know, yeah, but that was also and we also took advantage out of that because when it was raining we actually liked it that my father would, would put our bikes in his car and bring us up to school, but he was not <laughs> allowed to go. He was not allowed to go all the way to school because we didn't want to, you know, be different than the rest of the Dutchies. Oh, yes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> and when, How you know, did your mother cope being in, in Holland for three years? 
Oh, I think that time that was quite okay because he was one of the, we had this minister, uh, his son was at my class and he was actually married to someone uh, from Africa and uh, she was uh, together with my mother the first two ladies that were not Dutch in our community. So everybody knew my mother because not alone she was beautiful, but she was also very kind. And she was, you know, like a strange species mm -hmm. in the village. Very different, yeah. Yeah. So everybody knew her and that's why everybody knew us. And we had a lot of uh, uh, Irani things going on at home, the food, uh, parties. I used to give parties and my mother used to invite everybody and make, you know, chorizat and whatever, mm. kufte and whatever, you know, I was allowed to do that. And um, sometimes people uh, came at the door and then I had my pajamas on or something like a house thing. Uh -huh. A house dress kind of. Which was normal in Iran. Yeah. But, you know, but then people would say to me, oh, are you sick? <laughs> I was like, why? These cross-cultural stories are amazing. Yeah. So, you know, then I realized, oh, okay, nobody changes clothes apparently in this country. But I was used to a mother being, she was always at home. When we came home, she fed us, she had nice food. And the first thing she always said, sit down, tell me about your day, eat something and, uh, and change clothes. And you know, it was very safe and protected. Oh, she yeah. sounds delightful. Yeah. What's her name? Vida. Vida. Oh, it's Vida. great. Life. Yeah. Yeah. Life. Her name was Okay. Life. Now that so, we have entered foray into Vida, you must tell me about the concept of your book. Okay. Yeah. Um, it all happened when actually, uh, you know, being from two cultures, uh, I've had many years of funny stories and funny things happening to me. Um, and when my, father, my, my mother passed away about uh, a couple of years ago, unfortunately, um, very I'm sorry sad. For your loss. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, I realized how much she was my everything, actually. So to honor her, um, to honor her, and yeah. honor all the stories that we have been through, I decided to write it down. Also, also uh, some kind of way to, you know, to cope with the loss. And. Um, I didn't know if I had any skills whatsoever, but uh, I just sat down and uh, start writing. Uh, and my first uh, chapter is also, you know, uh, honoring my mother. I'm, new, I'm calling her out her name. And I'm telling you that uh, she always told me that you can die twice. You die the first time when uh, your spirit goes to heaven. And the second time uh, when nobody knows your name anymore. So oh. I took it, yeah, I took it upon me to um, tell her name in the book so that everybody that reads the book will remember her and her name and her legacy. So that's, you know, <laughs> honoring well, you her. You advertise yeah. the book greatly. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's all about her, you know? And I yeah. thought, yeah, uh, we're in Holland. We're living in Holland. Of course, I have still some, uh, I have a lot of family uh, living abroad in the States, in, in France, all over the world but also uh, still to a uh, very important uh, Dochter Ghaleh, my two nieces. Mm -hmm. And you know, Dochter Ghaleh's are like sisters. So, um, and I visited them a couple of years ago for the first time in so many years. I went back to Tehran. And, wow. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, they were standing there and waiting there for me. And that's why I, I was so uh, sure that I had to write the book because my Dr. Ghaleh were standing over there and they were crying for me because they said, it must be very difficult for you to come back to Tehran after 40, 45 years, all alone without your mother, you know? And I thought, yeah, this, yes. is, what, this is what family is. This is what I've been missing. The empathy, you know, the, the, the absolute love that you get from your family and yes. although although you know years have passed so i was so sure that it was a good thing to write this book um i wanted to translate it into english and also into farsi on a later stage uh but i wrote actually it's about uh the title is peppy and the journey of a butterfly who is actually a club sandwich and that's the full title so <laughs> I, <laughs> 
<laughs> it's going to be wonderful. Well, I hope so. I wrote it for everybody, for all the Doregues in the world, but also for people, you know, who are uh, maybe not a Dorege, but have been living abroad for so many years that you sometimes feel Dorege. Yes, it's the story yeah. of migrations, you know? Right, Mix right. Mix this so, and mix yeah. that. Yeah, so, you know, it's actually it's about family, it's about um, friendships, it's about love. It's about cultural differences because I have uh, put in there uh, little stories um, that uh, actually happened to me in my youth and mm -hmm. uh, things that my grandparents told us about, you know, fereste um, from your right shoulder and fereste from your left shoulder. Mm -hmm. and this butterfly um, has a lot of adventures together with her friends and then she's wondering how she can cope with her eastern part and what will happen when she goes to the west. So at the end of the of the book, I describe the emotion you have when you leave and not knowing when if you will see your grandparents and when you will see your grandparents. Uh huh. Did you ever see them again? Uh, yeah, that one time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's at least you did that. Yeah, really. So wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was so lucky to see them uh, one more time, and. Um, but tell me about club sandwich. Yeah, that's kind of an unusual metaphor for a dorage, like yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. How did it come well, to you? No, well, I was thinking about how how to tell the story. You know, it's not when you're not trained in uh, writing. Uh, I don't know if I have writing skills. I only know that I had a story to tell. Uh, and then I was thinking, like, how can I tell this story? Do I have to tell it in a grown-up book? Would that be nice or funny or you know would there be people uh wanting to hear the story and then i thought yeah but what do i want to say what what's the feeling that i have inside you know i'm always torn up and then i thought yeah i'm i was eating a club sandwich and i s thought this is it because it's not only bread it's also ham and cheese and mayonnaise and <laughs> lettuce and fries and you know it is so everything and then i realized that Doragues are um, not only one or two, they are more than that, because there is so many layers, you know? Um, yes, I love and, and that I, metaphor. Yeah. I love it. I, yeah, and it's food, you know, I love food, so it had to be something <laughs> with food. <laughs> of course, it'll sell a lot. What Maybe else, you know? <laughs> what else is there in life, <laughs> except music, dance and food, you know? And, <laughs> <laughs> I love the club sandwich. I just yeah. love it. Thank you. I'm so, so glad. You know, You're so articulate. You're one of my most interesting interviews. Thank you. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's good so to tell hear. Tell me about this uh, island that you live on, but yeah. yet it's part of Holland. Well, I'll tell you, yeah, we have, uh, the Dutch have been here for many, many, many centuries. They have had a uh, Curaçao Aruba. Do you know Aruba? The, a lot mm -hmm. of uh, Americans go to Aruba. Aruba, as they call it, and we yeah. call it Aruba, Aruba, and um, and you have Bonaire, and those three islands have been under Dutch Rhine for a lot of years, and uh, there some are now separate, but Bonaire is still under the Dutch flag, as they say. But it, of course, it's nothing to do with Holland because it's exotic here, it's warm here, it's sun, yeah. sea, and you know, so Holland's normally raining and. Uh, but it's 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 actually the most beautiful and colorful part of the Dutch Netherlands. Beautiful. And, uh, the funny thing is, I'll tell you, Jessica June, it's what happened to me when my mother passed away. Um, I came to Bonaire just by chance, and um, uh, I came to this area, uh, and they said to me, "This is protected nature area," and my house is there. And I said, well, protected nature area, okay, what does that mean? They said, well, it's the Treaty of Ramsar. And I was like, Treaty of Ramsar? What do you mean? I said, Interesting. That's, that, that, yeah, that's an uh, Iranian city at the uh, Gezer Shah. Yes. And then the, and they say, uh, and they said, yes. I said, wow, I should just that's have environmental you know, treaty. Yeah. So I, I came to Bonaire after maybe half year after my mother had passed and I found her. 9,000 kilometers far from home. So it was for me, it was like, oh, probably it was meant for me to, to be here, you know, something like that. I didn't so, realize you moved there after, uh, after your mother passed. Yeah, 
Yeah. So she was in in Holland. Yeah, she was in Holland. Yeah. 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 yeah she so passed in, in Holland. Delft, she, you said. Yeah, my father. No, my father was a uh, professor at Delft, and uh, we're from the the Hague area, actually. Uh huh. And then uh, you know, I knew my mother had a uh, operation, and I knew that uh, that would be a difficult one. But uh, unfortunately, they couldn't uh, help her. So um, that why that that's why we were devastated because she said to me, uh, "I will see the Omid Didar Azza," and oh, wow. um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I'm so but sorry. That was that, yeah. But uh, I, yeah, you know, uh, this is uh, somehow or another they got me to uh, Ramsar site. So now I'm here protecting the whole site. And whenever uh, you know they're very strict on this island concerning nature and uh, keeping the nature as it is, because we have a lot of pelicans here, we have a lot of uh, uh, flamingos here. It's a very, it's actually a really beautiful island. I always tell everybody, don't worry, I'm here. You know, I'm from Iran. <laughs> That's so interesting that you picked that spot. No, it picked me. I don't know. It picked you. Yeah. Did your father move with you? No, no. My father's still in Holland. He's uh, that's my only soft spot. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. My my sister's taking care of my father now in Holland. He's 85 at this moment. So. Um, yeah. 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 And uh, I've been. Uh, I often go to Holland to take care of him to aid my sister in that, taking care of him. I um, talked to him about leaving, but because my father has been internationally involved himself for many years, you know, he understands. So I am, I don't know, but I need to change. I've been living in Bosnia as well, in Sarajevo, and uh, you know, all the memories come back. It really makes me happy from inside. So thank I'm you so great. Much. So yeah. I hope this is the beginning of talking more in the near future. Yeah, I hope so too as well. Yeah. I really hope so. So yeah, and I, I'll try to translate my book and I really hope that uh, that will uh, put a smile on That'll uh, be uh, part you know. two of the... Uh, yeah, now part one, yeah, 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 yeah. Part one I will translate. I'm busy translating that actually. And um, as the second part I'm writing now. So the second, the first part is about uh, Tehran mm -hmm. and uh, the second one will be about the West. So at the end of the first book i leave and i leave behind my grandparents and the, the, the memories and uh, so it's it's you know about ending and the start of the revolution um, yeah so i also mentioned that so it's 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 really a remembrance of the youth that we had and uh, the west will, yeah that's my way of honoring uh, the iranian side of me yes yeah, I love it. I love it. I'm so proud of you, and thank you, Danny. We will follow up. So I'm going to let you go to your okay. beautiful beach. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Have you been yep. able to see? Shall I show you know, the the weather? I don't know. Can you see anything? At oh all? yes. Oh my goodness. Look at that. We that owe this so to Ramsar. Yeah, really. <laughs> this is I all. I love this. Yeah, it's beautiful. Fantastic. Huh? Yeah.